So Kotli, a bit disappointed with the way the West Indies per have been performing. They have not qualified for the World Cup. The test match has been the first test. Their performance has been symbolic. Here also means they are staring at a defeat. What do you say about West Indies cricket overall? It's quite obvious that we are not playing well. That has been going on for a number of years. And to not qualify for the World Cup coming up in India in a few months is very, very disappointing for myself and for many Caribbean cricket followers and former cricketers as well. Is, is that a good sign? But I believe that if we can manage to put some good structures in place, you know, we may see a bit of a, resurg a resurgence of West Indies cricket. But of course, it takes a lot of money as well. So it's, it's been very tough for us for a number of years and it's very disappointing. If you have to pick point three reasons why West Indies cricket have not done well in recent time, what, what were they? It's probably more than three reasons. But I believe that, and I've said it before many times, that when we were the number one team in the world, when we were the best team in the world, um, nothing much was done, you know, to nurture and harness the young cricketers coming up. Uh, I reckon that the, the, the cricket boards in the region, not only cricket West Indies, but territorial boards as well, because it doesn't take cricket West Indies alone to, 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 to run the cricket. Everyone has to be involved. And I think that we took it for granted that we will forever produce great cricketers. And that has not been the case. Other nations have put things in place, academies and stuff like that, to nurture the cricketers. And they've caught up with us and have gone past us. So we are paying a price for it. Yeah. And, and do you think another reason could be that uh, uh, the advent of T20 leagues across the globe? Because the West Indian cricketers, most of them, they fancy playing in the T20 leagues like IPL, CPL or the Caribbean BBL. That sort of hampered the West Indian cricket? It does hamper it a little bit because for many years, most of our best cricketers, you know, have gone abroad to ply their trade in different fran T20 franchises, right? Now, I don't believe that you should try to stop someone, you know, from going forward to make a decent living, you know, because let, let, let's be honest, cricket wrestlers can't pay these guys the kind of money they're making in, in different T20 franchises. So they're going to gravitate to it to try and secure themselves and for their families in a financial standpoint. No, you can't blame them. However, I still believe that they should at least find some kind of common ground, you know, to at least find time to represent your nation as well. But at the end of the day, there's nothing much we can do. If guys want to go off and play T20 franchises around the globe, well, we can't stop that. So that, that's why it's so important to, to nurture these younger players who are in the Caribbean to get them up to international standard. Yeah, but during your time, Sir Kirtley, obviously uh, gone with the, I'm not talking about the 75 to 9, 79, but when, when you were playing, when you guys were playing, you, Sir Courtney Walls, Brian, Sir Brian Lara, even that was also the golden phase of West Indies cricket somewhat. I mean, see, your performance against Australia, against England ha has been folklore I mean, I mean, for cricket. But what happened in, since then? I mean, obviously, this, 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 the, what we find is that the West Indian cricketers, they don't dominate or they don't perform to the potential. Every, every international team at some point will go through a, a transitional stage where you, 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 you're going to struggle for a while because you've got great players leaving the game, retiring or whatever the case might be and then new players are coming in. So every international team will go through that phase where you, you rebuild so you won't, win, you, won't, you won't win too many games. But then for us as West Indians, it's taking a little bit longer than I anticipated. And I'm quite sure that many other past great cricketers or even cricket followers will, will agree with me that it's taking a bit too long than we expected. But, um, you know, there's many different reasons. And of course, you know, West Indians are spoiled because between mid 70s to mid 90s, that 20 year period, we were a dominant force. So now that we are no longer a dominant force, you know, it's, it's hard to take. 
Yeah, obviously, Sir Kartli, obviously, now Brian Lara is uh, performance. Uh, he's in, into some sort of role. Uh, Jimmy Adams is also one of the directors. If you are given a chance to help uh, help figure out these West Indian bowlers, the upcoming bowlers, say, uh, um, would you be love to come forward and help the West Indian bowlers? Well, I've always made it clear to cricket West Indies and cricket teams in general. Because I, I don't want to just limit myself to West Indies. Because giving back to cricketers, you know, gives me a lot of pleasure. It means a lot to me. The knowledge and experience I've gained over the years of playing, I want to give back to cricket in general, right? And I've been around the West Indies setup from time to time, helping out, you know, never on a long-term basis. But whenever I'm asked to assist, I've always made myself available. So that's no issues there. If other teams across the globe need my services and I have the time, I will do it. Because like I said, I love to give back to cricket. Right. You know, it gives me a lot of joy and pleasure doing so. So I'm always open, you know, to, to give back, whether it's West Indies or any other nation. During your playing days, Cutley, who were the most difficult batsmen you bowled to? Now, that's a question that people have asked me a number of times. And it's a very difficult question to answer. Why? I've had the privilege of playing against many great batsmen in my time. Some days you struggle to get them out, they score runs and stuff like that. And then other days, these same great batsmen, you get them out quite cheaply. So it's really difficult to pinpoint one particular player who is the most difficult. It's, it's a tough question to answer. But uh, if you are to name a few, obviously I don't want to say one, two, yeah, three. Yeah, well, again, I don't like to name names, but I, I can say for a fact that some of the great players I've played against is a lot, it's a long list. But, you know, the, the ones that readily come to mind, you're talking about Sachin Tendulkar, you're talking about the Ricky Pontin, you know, I mean, Steve War. I mean, I mean, there's so many great players I've played against in the past, you know, that, you know, I've admired, you know, and just enjoy bowling against because I believe if I, if I can get these great players out, you know, it simply means I'm doing something good for my team. You know, and even for those guys that I've called, you go even further back, guys like Javi Meandad, you know, tough, tough cricketer, Graham Gooch, David Gower. So there's so many, Alan Border, there's so many names I could call, you know, but just to play against them and to get them out on occasion, you know, gives, gives me a lot of pleasure.